Hello. In this short clip, I want to introduce you to the Kosovo advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice and also explain the relevance of this opinion in providing some clarity on the existence and exact meaning of the right to self-termination of peoples. So let's begin. First, some words about the right to self-termination of people. So what does it entail? There are a few treaties that make reference to the right to self-termination of people. So one of these treaties uh, is the um, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and also the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. Both these treaties have the same provision on the right to self-termination. And let me quote. All peoples have the right of self-termination. By virtue of that right, they freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social and cultural development. All peoples may also freely dispose of their natural wealth and resources. So that is one provision. We also find reference to the right to self-determination in a very famous uh, resolution adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in the 1970s, the so-called Friendly Relations Declaration. So this too is very interesting. I will quote the relevant paragraph. Nothing in the foregoing paragraphs that all deal with the right of self-determination of peoples shall be construed as authorizing or encouraging any action which would dismember or impair totally or in part the territorial integrity or political unity of sovereign and independent states conducting themselves in compliance with the principle of equal rights and self-determination of peoples as described above and thus possessed of a government representing the whole people belonging to the territory. So from this uh, paragraph, you can uh, conclude, applying an a contrario reasoning, that uh, when a government is not representing the whole people belonging to the territory, then there would be a, a right of self-determination of those peoples that are not represented. Um, there is a lot of uh, ambiguity about the right of peoples to self-determination. There are a lot of outstanding questions that are not yet resolved in international law. So when the UN General Assembly put a question about the independence of Kosovo to the International Court of Justice, uh, many people hoped that the court would provide some further clarity on some of these issues. Uh, these issues include what is a people and how can the right to self-determination be exercised by those people. And then there are basically two scenarios. Yes, so people could be entitled to internal self-determination, autonomy within an existing state. Think of uh, Quebec in Canada. But they might also, under certain circumstances, be allowed to secede from the state uh, which they are in. I think now of Catalonia, they are making such a claim. Um, but, uh, or uh, think of uh, Crimea. Uh, as you can see, most of these examples are very controversial. And in any case, uh, secession from an existing state is quite a drastic measure. So if it uh, were allowed, it would only be allowed under very strict conditions as an uh, ultimum remedium. And then another question is, how does the right of peoples to self-termination apply outside the context of decolonization and foreign rule? Because in those two cases, uh, it is quite clear uh, what the right entails. But the context, uh, the content of the right outside the context of decolonization or foreign rule is much uh, more ambiguous. So let's now look at the Kosovo advisory opinion. And so basically, it was about the uh, claim of independence by Kosovo. Uh, it's always a bit tricky to give a an overview of the history or the background of Kosovo, because much of it is uh, controversial and disputed. Uh, but let me uh, make a, an attempt. And so until the late 1990s, Kosovo was an autonomous province uh, within Yugoslavia or the Republic of Serbia later. Uh, but then in 1998, uh, the uh, ethnic Albanian minority in Kosovo wanted to break free from uh, Serbian oppression. And this was met with uh, a military campaign directed against them from Yugoslavia. 
Uh, then the North uh, Atlantic Treaty Organization and NATO uh, wanted to rescue the uh, ethnic Albanian minority and conducted military airstrikes in, on Yugoslavia. Then from 1999 until 2008, uh, Kosovo was basically administered by the international community, by the uh, United Nations, until in 2008, uh, Kosovo declared itself independent and claimed to be uh, a new state. And that's very briefly the history. And then in 2010, the United Nations General Assembly uh, put the following question uh, to the International Court of Justice, uh, seeking some legal advice from the court. I will quote. So the question was, is the unilateral declaration of independence by the provisional institutions of self-government of Kosovo in accordance with international law. And here on the picture, you see the representatives of this uh, self-government of Kosovo. Uh, the court divided its uh, analysis of the question into two sections. Uh, one related purely to the lawfulness of the declaration under international law, general international law, and the other uh, related to the lawfulness in relation to a particular UN Security Council resolution. But that I'm going to skip. I'm going to look only at the general international law part. So there were basically three issues that the court uh, had to address in order to assess the lawfulness of the Declaration of Independence by the Kosovo authorities. The first one was, is it uh, prohibited under international law to make such a Declaration of Independence? And on this, the court said the following. You can read the whole paragraph at home. Uh, the court concluded that the practice of states does not point to the emergence under international law of a new rule prohibiting the making of a declaration of independence in, in such cases. And such cases refers both to uh, decolonization and to uh, issuing declaration of independence in the context of uh, people subject to alien subjugation, domination and exploitation, and even to other contexts. And so international law contains no prohibition to issue a declaration of independence. But then uh, some people argue that such a declaration might be implicitly prohibited because it uh, breaches the principle of territorial integrity, as for example, uh, codified in Article 2, Paragraph 4 of the Charter of the United Nations. On this, uh, the court was very brief. Uh, the court concluded that yes, there is such a thing as a principle of territorial integrity and uh, states are bound to respect the territorial integrity of other states, but that principle only applies between states. So that principle, the principle of territorial integrity is not binding on uh, secessionist movements like the authorities of Kosovo. And so to quote, uh, the scope of the principle of territorial integrity is confined to the sphere of relations between states. So by issuing the Declaration of Independence, uh, the Kosovo authorities did not act in breach of the principle of territorial integrity. Um, some uh, states wanted the International Court of Justice uh, not only to assess whether the issuance of the Declaration of Independence was uh, wrongful, but whether Kosovo had a right to secede, a right to create a new state. And the Netherlands was one of the countries that argued for such a thing as a right of remedial secession. But the court um, did not really address that issue because in view of the court that was beyond the scope of the question put to it by the UN General Assembly. So in the end, it did not assess the conditions that would be would have to be met in order for a, a peoples uh, to claim a secession from the states they are in. And this was a bit of a disappointment to international law scholars like myself. So the question is still open, basically. Uh, so the conclusion of the advisory opinion of uh, 22 July 2010 is that the Declaration of Independence of Kosovo adopted by 
the Kosovo authorities on 17 February 2008 did not violate international law. But this is not the same thing as saying that Kosovo had a right to secede from Serbia. Uh, since then, uh, since 2010, uh, many states have recognized Kosovo as an independent state. Uh, so here you see a map of the world and all the states in green uh, have recognized the statehood, uh, so the independence of Kosovo. But uh, it's, about, it's yeah, about half of the international community that has done so. So many other states do not recognize Kosovo as an independent state. So what is my conclusion? Um, so was the declaration uh, lawful under general international law? Well, state practice does not point to the emergence of a rule prohibiting the making of a declaration of independence. The principle of territorial integrity, eh, as codified in Article 2, Paragraph 4 of the UN Charter, is confined to the sphere of relations between states. And the International Court of Justice, in its advisory opinion, felt no need to consider the more general question uh, whether Kosovo had a right to secede from uh, the Republic of Serbia. Thank you for your attention.